Hey, what's up guys? Tom from Positive Lead Diagnostics. Today we are working on a 2000 Audi A6 with a 2.8 liter engine and the customer complaint is the check engine lights on. So let's get the scan tool hooked up, see what kind of trouble codes we have. All right guys, so what we have is a P0153 O2 sensor, bank two, sensor one, response two, slow. So we'll just bring up some information here on these O2 sensors. They are uh, four wire O2 sensors, uh, power and a ground for the heater and a uh, signal wire and a ground, sensor ground. So uh, we have a slow response code. And uh, so basically not the amplitude is what we're gonna be looking at, but the actual uh, time for the switching rate of the O2 sensor. Uh, so my plan is just going to be we have a known good one, which would be our bank one sensor one and uh, One that we're having a fault being flagged for on bank two sensor one. So basically I just want to use this and uh, as a guide and uh, figure out where these O2 sensors uh, I know the O2 sensors are on the firewall, but which one is which bank one sensor one is on the passenger side and then we have bank two sensor two uh, as a black connector on the driver's side. So uh, just gonna hook up to the signal wire and the grounds on both and uh, compare the two. Bank one, sensor one is gonna be right here, passenger side. Uh, another easy way to identify would be looking at which cylinder head sits up further. So this one's up to here, passenger's back here. Bank one is cylinder head that sits further forward and the passenger one is going to be underneath this coolant bottle so we'll just have to take this coolant bottle out and to access that connector so let me get the scope set up so bank one is going to be our channel A, our blue and pin four is our signal and then we're gonna use the actual sensor ground. It's gonna help clean it up and take out most of that interference. And then the red is gonna be our bank two sensor one, uh, the one that we're having the fault for. So pin three is our sensor ground. Pulling chug out of the way. All right, so channel A, the blue, is going to be our bank one, sensor one, our known good. Channel B, our red, is going to be our bank two sensor one that we have the problem with. So I'll start it up, I'll focus you guys on the scope, and I will watch these O2s as they warm up. You want the O2s hot too when you're when you're testing them. So let me fire this thing up. All right, guys. So I'm hooked up. I am on a two-second time scale. Uh, two volts on our voltage scale. Blue trace, bank one, sensor one, the known good. Red trace, bank two, sensor one, uh, the one with the slow response code. And already you can see the difference in the switching rates. Raise the RPM, get these O2s, make sure they're nice and hot.
So I just held the RPM up a little bit. These O2s are nice and hot. And you can see the red trace, our bank two sensor one is a little bit lazy compared to our bank one sensor one. Amplitude looks good. Uh, about 0.8 to maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2. That's what you want to see uh, going rich to lean. And the same thing on the, the bank two, our amplitude looks good, 0 0.8, 0 0.1. So it's not the actual amplitude that we're concerned of, it's the actual timing of the switching rate. And comparing the two, you can already see the difference. This one, rich lean, rich lean, rich lean. This one is lean, then it's rich for a little bit, then it's lean again, then it's rich. It's real lazy. Uh, so that's gonna be the issue. Chances are this needs an O2 sensor, but to be sure, uh, we also want to check the heater circuit, make sure the heater circuits are fine. And if the heater circuit's okay, then it needs an O2 sensor. Cool that we can actually show that. Just gonna raise the RPM up. Take it up to about two grand. And you can see the switching rate of the bank one sensor one is much faster. Take it up 2,500. Closer to three grand. Huge difference. All right guys, so what it looks like is we have a faulty O2 sensor. It's just a uh, delayed response, slow response. It's lazy compared to bank one, sensor one. Uh, you can see, especially raising the RPM, that switching rate compared to the bank one, sensor one, two totally different uh, rates. And that one being slow response, that's the fault we have. So uh, one last check, make sure that our heater circuit's good. I know we didn't have any faults for it, but um, that would be the next thing that is going to affect how this O2 sensor reads. So it's really simple. It's just a power and a ground. If all that's good, call it for an O2 sensor. All I have to do is change my scales. Uh, I'll make our red trace a 20 volt. Blue trace, 20 volt. And uh, we'll take a look at both heater circuits. So just move these two pins over. Brown and white is the ground. Red with green will be a power. Good contact. And we have 12 volts on the bank one, sensor one. Let me move these pins over and I'll focus you on the scope. All right guys, so here's both my heater circuits. Both at 12 volts. Heater circuits are good. And what this car needs is a bank two sensor one, O2 sensor for a slow response fault. So pretty simple. That might just be the contact. Yeah, it's just the contact of my pins. So. Uh, 100% needs an O2 sensor. If I can get you an after shot, I will. All right guys, so a faulty O2 sensor, bank two sensor one, compared amplitude and frequency to the bank one sensor one. O2 heater circuits are good, needs an O2 sensor. So pretty simple. Uh, if I can get an after shot, I will. If not, 
not a big deal, 100% needs an O2 sensor. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and thanks for watching. All right guys, got the new O2 sensor installed on the Bank 2. Let's fire this baby up. So I'll let these O2s warm up and then focus you on there. So the blue channel, our channel A is our Bank 1 sensor one. And the red trace, channel B is our bank two sensor one, which is the new sensor. Raise the RPM up a bit. So you can already see the switching rate on our red one. That was the slow response one we had before. Much quicker response time now. And it looks a little bit faster than our bank one, which is was the good one before. So just wanted to get you guys an aftershot, faulty O2 sensor.